Okay, guys, what's up? I'm back. So this is one thing that I like to do a lot of. Um, I like to show you guys these posts, these job posts that are put out here for a lot of reasons. Right. So today we're going to look at this Netflix job post because there's some things in it that are just bogus. And although Netflix is my dream company and my favorite company to work for. I doubt I will ever achieve that, mainly because their job posts are so bogus. They're just unrealistic, you know. No human being on the planet exists with qualifications for this job. And I can only deduce that I'm not Caucasian, so that would be the only fit and manner in which they ultimately select someone, in my opinion, if they're Caucasian, because the qualifications they're looking for, no one has. Nobody of any race has them. So then it becomes, so then in my opinion, it comes down to, uh, I hate to use racial terms as, you know, race, but it comes down to that, right? It comes down to a race bias in that whoever's doing the hiring wants someone who's like them, who resembles them. Racial, because, well, in-group bias dictates that, hey, I'm a good person and someone who looks like me is a better person than someone who doesn't look like me. Right. So that's just the way it is. And Netflix, I think I've done a couple before, but I don't know. I don't remember. But I know Netflix to me is like they are the top one, the top company that has the most bogus job descriptions i wouldn't even consider their career page it's you know you would think for a company like netflix they would have a better way of interviewing or posting jobs you would think that they would be doing it with video and not um and not um text-based posts but also um i'm also upset that you know people are hiring for ux jobs or, or jobs that have a little bit of ux in them and it just makes sense to hire someone who does UX. You guys got a lot of UX people there. Hire them to write the job post. But you don't write the job post because this is what you get. So I'm going to show you what you get when Netflix creates a job post. Okay? That was a long-winded way to say that. And this is off the dome, so bear with me. So no shade to the, to the poster. They're doing their thing. Successful. Proud to see it. No shade to the poster. But this job post just got to go. So here we go. And there's a couple of things I'm going to point out to you too. So they announced that they're posting for a job. They're hiring a staff content. Now it's a staff content role. This is just a glamified writer position. But they call it a staff content designer. Okay. Now the... Hiring person says they've been at Netflix four years. Four years. Okay, they worked at Netflix four years. We're gonna get into that. Keep that hold that thought. So let's look at the job post. Without further ado, let's look at the job post. Okay. And this is kind of like a, a a contradiction in that they want Netflix prides itself on certain things communitively writing and this writing is awful. And this is a writer's position. But this writing is awful. I might do that. I might write a better job post for them. If I understood what they wanted. I think I do, but I'm not sure. But we'll figure it out. So, staff content designer. Enterprise XD content and business products. Okay. So, what they want is... I know Netflix has an internal Netflix that they use for their production partners. So, what they want you to do is to write for that platform. It's a pretty amazing platform. I think it even has movies, just like our Netflix, but it's for production partners. So production partners watch a different version of Netflix. And I would assume that it's so that they can direct and produce and make changes on the fly based on what people are watching at that moment of time to see if they get past 15 minutes. What was it that may have got them through the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. And then they can piece together their production like that. Especially when it comes to series, right? So for me, like for example, if I watch, um, damn, I get so off topic. 
real quick, if I watch um, Designated Survivor, the first episode, for me, what captured my attention, right? Was it the 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 um the surprise? Uh, I don't want to spoil it for nobody, but was it the surprise thing that kept me watching and kept me intrigued, right? That's what they're doing. So they have a pro- they have a product like that for their production partners to say, well, Wolfred like this, or not me, but a bunch of people like this about Designated Survivor. So they may tweak a similar genre with that, with that surprise. That just if a lot of people spiked on that surprise, they're gonna offer that surprise. You know, okay. I'll talk more about that later because it's a pretty cool thing that they have for their internal partners. So this is an internal business product. They're seeking an experienced content designer for their enterprise team focused on content and business products. Now, they could have stopped there and left it alone. That's all they needed to say. But they go on and do this. They talk about the role. Okay. You can read that for yourself. And they talk about you. Okay. And they throw UX in here. I don't know why they put UX in here. But, okay, whatever. And then they come down to the qualifications. And this is the bogus part right here. And I see this a lot, but this is the worst. 10 years of relevant experience. 10 years of relevant writing experience. UX writing, content strategy, consumer-focused copywriting short firm digital now what does that mean okay so they want you to be a copy they want you to be a ux copywriter with 10 years experience or 10 years experience in content strategy i'm not sure what that means consumer focused copywriting that would be ads so if you worked in advertising which doesn't exist advertising hasn't existed in the last what is this? 2023? Advertising hasn't existed in almost uh, 19 years. <laughs> so <laughs> they want you to do copywriting for ads. If you did copywriting for ads. And short firm digital. That would be like short stories. So if you wrote short story movies. Um, I'm sorry. If you wrote short movies. You know, short film scripts basically. Okay. I don't know what a content strategist is. That might be like, um, maybe like social media posts, which social media hasn't even been around for 10 years, where someone would have that much experience. So basically, they're looking for someone who's, we, we, we know for a fact, they're looking for someone who's not 20 years old. So if you're 20 years old, if you're 22 years old, you don't have this, you don't have the qualifications for this job. So you're definitely at least not 22. I don't want to get into that, but it sounds to me like this isn't going to be a job for a 20-something, which is ironic because that's who watches Netflix. So I don't know. But 10 years of relevant writing experience. Now, what does that say to you? That says to me that they want to keep a lot of people from applying or they want to be able to disqualify a lot of people that aren't of the same race as them. That's how you do it, because this is nobody has this level of experience. And I'm going to go into all the qualifications. We're going to go over all of them. OK. Um, experience working on a product design or UX team and with global brands. Oh, my God. It's hard enough working on a product design team, let alone a UX team. But you got to do it with Facebook, Google, Amazon, um, PayPal, Tesla, somebody like that. Ooh, that's out of breath already. Okay, fine. I guess no one actually lasts that long at those jobs, but that's fine. If you believe that, that's okay. Mastery of AP style. Ooh, you know, most people don't even... No one has mastered AP style except for literary professors on a graduate level, PhD level, all right, of university, not college, university. Two different things. And the confidence to know when to break the rules, which no conservative master of AP style is ever going to break those rules. Those rules actually are broken every day in modern journalism since 
the fifties, but who cares about that? Some nerdy talk, right? But so they're looking for a university professor on a master graduate uh, on a graduate level in literature or some type of writing background. A couple of schools, Northwestern comes to mind. They have a great journalism program. Um, ability to think critically about users' journeys and content flows. Here we go. More UX stuff. <laughs> More UX stuff and connect the dots between them. So as a UX person, we don't connect the dots. We do user testing. We don't have invisible things we fill. We don't fill invisible gaps with invisible data. Okay. Um, ability to navigate ambiguity. What I didn't want to answer that. That's this is obvious. Reading this post, that's probably the one qualification I have. Highly collaborative and self-directed. I would say that, don't know what that means. And proficient in languages other than English and experience in the world of filmmaking R+. So not only do you have to know one of the several languages on the planet, or maybe several of them, right? Proficient in speaking, conversation, fluency, writing, all that. You also have to have been a filmmaker. Possibly that would help. And like I said, this person doesn't even exist. They wrote this stuff. This person doesn't even exist. I can only assume that the qualifications, if they all matter, if they all don't matter, why use all of them? You know what I'm saying? And this is a full-time salary position that reports to the enterprise content design manager who we're going to look at their resume in a second because I found something very interesting. So, does this sound interesting but overwhelming? Yes. <laughs> Please don't self-select out. Let's figure it out together. We love to talk to you. We are an equal opportunity employer. Well, no, you're not because no one under the age of 22 is going to be able to apply for this job. So how are you? You just knocked out everyone under the age of 22, maybe even 25. It's age bias right there. We approach diversity and inclusion seriously and thoughtfully. We do not discriminate based on race, religion, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, age, marriage status, veteran status, or disability status. Well, they're definitely discriminating against age. That's obvious because 10 years experience, that's insane. That means no one over the age of 25 can get this job. I should sue them myself, but I have to apply for the job first. But at my age, I actually will fall into having the required ex years of experience. <laughs> So I would have to find out if I would have to sue them and find out if they hired someone younger than me, <laughs> which would be silly because there's no way anyone younger than me can even apply for this job. OK, and then they go into more stuff, compensation. And this is the most insulting part of it all. Right. Typically, 80,000 to a half a million dollars now. Nah. That is a wide range. Remember I mentioned they want, they really want a university level professor, a university, a, a graduate level professor or a, a PhD level professor. That's why you have the half a million dollars. That's to lure them away from their tenure. That would do it. That would lure them away from their tenure. Not that they're ever going to see this because they don't watch Netflix, but I mean, that will lure them away. Um, the 80 grand is an insult because if you think about it, and I'll just throw these numbers out, this ain't even accurate. So I'm lowballing. I'm lowballing. Journalism student started, let's say they were 20. Let's say they graduate 22. They just have a regular BA, their journalism, journalism uh, major. Their starting salary is like 35, maybe 42. 35, 42. Okay. So if you think about it, 80 grand, if you say they got a, a raise every year, let's say, say they got a $10,000 raise every year for 10 years, that would be at least 100000 
So to have this much, so to accumulate this much experience, their current salary would be at least one hundred and forty thousand a year. You want to start them at eighty, because that's what this means. This range is beyond is so skewed. The numbers of this range are so are so screwed that eighty thousand isn't even the minimal for someone with ten years of experience. It shouldn't even exist. Yeah, they want to disclose it, but who is going to take this job for eighty thousand? First off, it's Netflix. It screams, it screams my salary is at least above board, above board, which is one hundred and fifty. So I don't know who they think is going to take this job for less than eighty thousand, for eighty thousand or less, which is kind of crazy. And they say uh, base salary is based on total compensation versus only base salary, which is in line with our compensation policy. And Netflix just have a very interesting compensation pol- philosophy. I'm sorry. Netflix just have a very interesting compensation philosophy. So there's a video on YouTube you can watch about that. All right. So here we go. Going back up to the top. Now we looked at that. Now let's look at your boss's credentials. And again, no shade on her. I'm sure she is great at what she does. You know, I really enjoy it. She's one of the reasons why I stay subscribed. I've been with Netflix since DVD. So, you know, I, I, I stay subscribed because of the work of these people. They do good work. Some things I would probably be able to help them out with better than they can solve. But that's fine. She does good work. But let's look at her background. If you look at her work experience, right? She was a content designer at Facebook. Now, look, if you started her today and she applied for this job, if this job was available, whatever, how many years ago, she only had three years of experience. So as a content designer, she only had three years of experience. As a content strategist, she had a year. So we'll we'll give her four years and five months. So we'll give her four years. So we'll just round up to five years. Technically, she wouldn't even qualify for this job with five years experience. She would be five years too short. And none of her work is in the UX. None of her work is in the UX, as you can see. None of her work is in the UX. Now, she wrote UX copy for ads. And I'm trying to think, where did she, um, who taught her that? You know, who taught her that? Because... UX copy is a hard to get into for people who have experience in UX design and then they become copywriters. It's hard enough to do that. But I'm not seeing any place where she got um, any UX experience. But she does have a master's of so a master's of MS master's of science is that from Pratt Institute. I think her initial thing was to become a librarian or a curator at a museum. And then she transitioned into tech, which is pretty cool. But she wouldn't be qualified for this job. And that's what I think is interesting, that she wants someone who has beyond qualifications that she didn't possess four years ago, four years later. So, you know, I'm always looking out for Netflix to come out with the job that says, 20 years qualifications. <laughs> I'm looking for that job post to come out next. So, of course, you know, I commented. I said, 10 years of experience. Did I understand that correctly? Or is that a typo? Like, you like you literally mean I have to be at least 35 to apply for this job? <laughs> I have to be 35 to apply for this job? At least 35 to apply for this job. You know what I'm saying? And I checked out some of these other people and it was kind of funny because I noticed like a lot of them, a lot of people just all of a sudden became like UX writers and UX content designers overnight. But your title doesn't mean anything. Okay, your title, the UX title, it doesn't mean anything. You have to you have to do work. You can't just call yourself somebody as a UX person. You can't call yourself a UX person and you've never done any work, you know? Because the first thing they're going to say is, well, what sites have you wrote copy for? What sites have you done? And when you and they're going to put you in a room with a real UX person 
And UX people at Netflix are probably the best in the industry. So they're going to put you in the room with them and they're going to be like, this person is bullshit. And they don't do you know, they don't do not UX copy. <laughs> but it's not about your title. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do that's different? What are you going to do that's unique? For example, if I was to look at this, if I was to interview for this job, which I probably would never get the opportunity to, mainly because, like I said, those qualifications are unrealistic. They even kind of, they even kind of admit to it a little bit. If you look here, they kind of even like admit to it tacitly when they say, you know, they say, look, you know what? This does sound um, overwhelming. They say, does this sound interesting, but overwhelming? So they tacitly admit like, yeah, you know what? We're full of shit. We just wanted to Look like we're hiring and we wanted to put up some unrealistic things so we can get a bunch of people. And maybe, I don't know, maybe they're laughing at these people or I don't know. But it's, it's very cruel, very cruel thing to do. Um, very cruel thing to do if they're not serious. And I don't see that. I don't see that they're serious. There's nothing serious about this job post at all. Ten years is. Is a is a definitely screams exorbic attitude, especially with a person who started the, f- who apparently was the first person. Let me hold on. Let me get let me get the direct quote. Um, I joined Netflix four years ago as a content designer. So, damn, she does some hella good networking, though, man. I gotta give it to her. She's definitely intelligent, cause she does some hella good networking. Yeah, see, she was the first content designer on the studio product team. So, in addition to UX, UI writing, I think that's a typo. I think she just means UX writing. There's no UI writing, but, you know, I'll digress on that. But she's hell of intelligent. She, she, she networked her way to become the first person on their content design team and at the two at the three years they made her a manager and now she's hiring for a role that really requires a year or two she's hiring she she set the bar so abysmally high for a staff position. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Did I mention that part? This is a staff position. So in journalism, this is the guy that gets coffee and bagels for people. This is like the lowest position. This is a person who fact who facts checks and makes sure your last name on the by, on the byline is spelled correctly and does retractions and all that stuff. This is a staff position, mind you, okay? So that would explain the 80 grand. <laughs> Basically, what we would call a dog a, a dog show position. You know what I'm saying? You show up, you do a lot of the dog work, keep busy work. You don't do nothing interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I just, you know, oh, I was going to give my suggestion. Well, my first suggestion would be, hey, why are you even still using text? You are a, well, you're an interactive game company. You're not really a... Uh, uh, a content company. You're an interactive game company. But why are you still using text? I mean, wouldn't it be better to use some type of audio visual, you know, some type of uh, Alexa integration or some type of uh, video talking head? You know, I can't understand this obsession with the written word where we're so far beyond that, where information... Is captured visually so much more compelling. It's so much more compelling to capture information visually than it is to read it. So I don't know about you, but I hate reading technical documents and monitors and phones were not designed with that in mind. So I don't know. My my, my suggestion, the way I would do the job is I would be like, look, I'm not even a writer. I'm going to film some shit. I'm going to film the copy. And we're going to act it out. You know what I'm saying? So if someone is like, okay, uh, a production partner might say to themselves, um, 
I want to learn how to set up a new workflow. Sure, Jim, I'll help you with that. That would be visual. That would be a video, like like YouTube, like a YouTube tutorial video, right? That's what I would do. That that would be my content strategy. I wouldn't be doing any writing at all. I think, I think it doesn't do Netflix justice to be to be writing, to have to have uh, verbiage. I mean, you're 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 a visual content. Com- I'm sorry, you're an interactive game company, building off of visual content for crying out loud. Um, I think everything you do should be visual, if not audiology not audio you know definitely should be visual i'll give you an example maybe i'll figure something out i'll do a little test let's do it let's do some tests yeah let's do some tests i think it's time i think it's time <laughs> i think i might have just solved that the question of the decade yeah let's do let's do some tests why not why not let's have some fun with this all right guys but this is what i wanted to show you i think i did a video like i said years ago but i never post that netflix had up and I'll, I'll share it with you again, just to recap. But please, don't take offense, Netflix. I know you guys have a great internal feedback structure. You guys like things to be candid. So I hope this helps. All right, peace. I'll talk to you later. I'm out.